So people, we are going to look into this. And I believe that um, it will be a blessing. Re realizing your mistake. Realizing our mistakes. Hallelujah. Or realizing the mistakes. So we want to look into it. People, all right. So if you if you just come on it, let me say this quickly. Then I begin to say what I have to say. Just share the program. Invite people to watch it. Put it on any group. Group be a belong to be on. Take time and put it there. This is educative platform that we learn. And I believe that this will go a long way for you. Is is able, what we are teaching here is able to revolutionize your life. It's able to bring the transformation that you're looking for. So God bless you for being here. Hallelujah. God richly so bless you. Amen. So as I said, the shares are a bit down. So put it on all the platforms that you're in. Don't be afraid. Just put it there and be proud of what you believe and what you have. And what we are going to learn. Amen. So I thank you and God bless you all. Belinda, you're welcome. Belinda Jampa, you're welcome. Belinda, you're welcome. All right. Beloved, the destructive weapons of mistakes, the destructive power or the destructive weapon of mistakes. Realizing your mistake, that is the caption. You know, sometimes, sometimes, some of the mistakes that we do, let me say this. Mistakes are different from sin. So I won't combine the two. You can make a mistake which is not a sin. You can make a mistake in life and it will cost you hugely. It, be, it will be a devastating blow on your life. And yet it's not a sin and you make it to heaven. So these are the things that I just want us to look into it. The destructive weapon or power of mistakes. And we are going to realize those mistakes. Hallelujah. Beloved, if you're hearing me, sometimes, sometimes, mistakes cannot be rectified. So this is very serious. Some of the mistakes that we do in life, sometimes you cannot rectify it. You cannot rectify some of the mistakes and unfortunately, some of us, we have to live by the mistakes that we've done. That is why it's very important that you recognize the mistakes that me and you have done. We are not immune to mistakes. You and me, it doesn't matter how anointed you are. There are men and women of God watching me right now. We are not immune to mistakes. Oh, we are capable. We are able to make mistakes. And indeed, we've made mistakes. Indeed, we've made mistakes. So, we look into the mistakes and we learn from the mistakes. It's very important. But before you are able to learn from the mistake, you must realize it. You must recognize that you've made a mistake. So, these are very important. So, some of the mistakes, probably as a pastor, as a prophet, as evangelist, some of the mistakes you may live with it the rest of your life. You cannot erase it. The blood of Jesus cannot wipe it that no one will talk about it. It's there. If it's a sin, even if it's a sin, the blood of Jesus has the power to wipe it out from your life. But the mistakes that we commit in life as we live on this earth, beloved, in the realms of the spirit, sins are erased by our Lord. But in the memory of man, and in, even in your own memory, you cannot erase from it. Some of the mistakes that we do, sometimes it comes back and hunts us. Big time. Big time. So we must learn, and I'll bring a character. He's a favorite of mine, and we're going to learn from it, and I believe it will be a blessing unto you. So some of the mistakes becomes a permanent scar on you, a permanent scar. Sometimes the mistakes that we've committed, People will label you by that mistake the rest of your life. Sometimes it becomes an imprint in the minds of others and it never goes away. Anytime that your name is mentioned, they will bring it up. Anytime in any conversation, even when you appear, when you come there, beloved, it will not go away. It's in the mind of others. And there is nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Some of it leads people to commit suicide. Some of the mistakes lead people to recoil. It doesn't bring the best in them. They just exist, but they don't live. 
So these are things that we're supposed to look into it. And trust me, most of the mistakes, the devil has no hand in it. It's me and it's you. So recognizing your mistakes. No shifting of blames. Let me say this before I even bring. No shifting of blames. Don't look at your back and try to pinpoint and let the blame of somebody. No, look into your own life and we come to learn of it. And I'm learning and you're learning and it will be a blessing for, for us. God bless you, Evelyn. God bless you, Efua Techua. And God bless you, my brother, um, Pastor Bernard Entry. God bless you, man of God. Sometimes some of the mistakes are minor. They are minor mistakes. They are insignificant. You can get away with it. Some of the mistakes that we do, sometimes you can get away with it. It wouldn't make much difference in your life. It, it, it may sometimes not have any negative connotation. It may not have probably some setbacks. You may have maybe a bit of setbacks, but it wouldn't be that bad. So sometimes it has no dangerous implications. Some of the mistakes, it may not have dangerous implications. It may not even affect you bodily. But some of the mistakes that we do, Rasko Toka, some of the mistakes that we do, if you are, it's costly, it's deadly, it, it brings setbacks in your life. And if you're not careful, you will never progress. And you will sit down blaming the devil, looking for solutions somewhere. Meanwhile, the solution stares at your face. That is why today I want you to take time and let us learn about mistakes. It is not a sin, but you've made a mistake. I don't want you to use the mistake of committing a sin. No, this is a mistake and we will come into that. Realizing your mistake or realizing our mistakes. And it is the most destructive weapon or power to destroy you. Very important. So I just want to make that. So two types of mistakes. The one is very minor. The one is very major. And sometimes you have to live with it the rest of your life. So which means that you have to fasten your seatbelt. Because anytime that your name is mentioned, people come, oh, just leave him. We know him. Oh, just leave her. We know her. This is who she is. Oh, yes, this is what she's done, beloved. And they will label you with the mistake that you've committed 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And people still mention your name and they attach. It's like a price tag. They attach that mistake on your name. And it's very, very deadly. And it's very, very costly. Beloved, you understand? It's very, very costly. So realizing your mistake. Let me say this. Let me say this before I read the scripture. To realize something, if you realize it, it means you become fully aware of it. You become fully aware of it. Apostle Carl, I salute the oil of God upon your life. Apostle, thank you. So when you realize something, to realize, so realizing your mistake, let me explain it because I am a prophet, I am a teacher. So when I am... Let me bring clarifications on this, okay? To realize is to become fully aware of the facts. Become fully aware of the facts. To realize is to understand clearly. You understand what is happening. To bring vividly to the mind. That means you are realizing it. To bring vividly, clearly to the mind. That is to realize. Again, to come into your attention as a fact. Hallelujah. To come into your attention as a fact that is realizing something. There is a saying that if you don't realize what you have, you will lose it. Or sometimes you may not realize what you have until you lose it. So when you don't realize it, it means you don't have clearly understanding of what is happening. You don't have, you, you are not aware of what you carry if you don't realize it. So realization is very important and is key in our work in life, when you begin to realize something. Some of us, we don't even realize the potentials that we have, the talents that we have, the giftings that we have. And sometimes we sit and we cry, but we have enough in us that will take us to another level in our lives. Beloved, when we talk about mistakes, because I've said realizing your mistake, when you talk about mistake, mistake is an error in action, or somebody will say an error. So let me say that so that you will understand. An error in action, calculations, opinion, or judgment. It's just an error. You made a mistake. Instead of you typing P, 
you did B. Instead of you punching Z, you punch Q. So it's a mistake. It's a typing error. So when we talk about mistake, it's an error in action. So when you look into your actions, some of the things that you think you have to do, you didn't do it. And we've committed a lot of mistakes in our actions, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our social life. We've committed, we've done a lot of mistakes. And when the mistakes piles up, beloved, it blows up and it becomes something else. So don't turn a blind eye to what we are discussing. Sometimes mistakes in ministry, some people fast for 40 days. They fast for 21 days. They do kapoka pakata, thinking that that will solve the problem. But most of times, what will solve the problem is you recognizing the facts of what is happening. So you ask yourself, what is going on at this very point in time? You must realize it. You must understand what is happening. If you don't, people, your actions may be wrong. And when you don't recognize it, you don't realize it, and you begin to make mistakes, which means the decision that you take, the actions in which you do, beloved, there will be a lot of error in it. So mistakes, you're talking about error in actions. In the way sometimes you talk, you made a mistake. You make a mistake, and the mistake cost you your job. The mistake that came out of your mouth, you lost respect from others. It's a huge thing. So let's analyze it, and we will be a blessing. So mis mistake is an error in actions, in calculations. You know, sometimes when somebody comes your way, and they tell you the things, sometimes you, you go there, you want to settle matters, and by the time that you leave, you even created worse. The situation has become worse by the time that you leave. Why? Because the calculation was wrong. It was wrong. You prayed all right, but you got the calculations wrong. You fasted all right, but you got the calculations wrong. And you'll be sitting down blaming the devil. Meanwhile, probably sometimes and most times and oftentimes, it may not be the devil. Is that you just got it wrong. In your opinion, you may share your opinion in the matter. Opinion are like gnosis, and you made a mistake. You got it wrong in the opinion. So, man of God, it's my opinion. It's your opinion, but your opinion is not verified. It's not valid. You've said it. This is, this is, uh, talking is cheap. As I'm talking here, it may be cheap. Everybody can talk. There are some people, they are great speakers. They talk about alcohol. They resent it. They make you hate alcohol, but in their bedrooms, they drink. Some smokes, some men of God smoked weed, some women of God, they did nasty things. So sometimes preaching is cheap. But if you are to leave it, that is where the problem is. So we are learning and a step at a time, we are going together. You are with me. All right. So you make an error in your opinion or judgment. Caused, and this, the, this mistake is caused by poor reasoning. Poor reasoning carelessness, and insufficient knowledge. So the mistake, the error in your judgment, the error in your calculations, the error in your opinion or judgment, or judgment is caused by poor reasoning. Poor reason will be also, oh my God, sometimes you must begin to reason about something for about three days, for about one month. Don't rush into it. Poor reasoning, people, it will cost you a lot. So, some of the mistakes is caused by poor reasoning, sometimes carelessness. Carelessness. We are not efficient in it. And sometimes, ineffective knowledge. It's a mistake. You saw someone doing a business, you want to get into the business, and you just find out one or two things, and you say, oh, I know, let me go and start. Beloved, you don't know. You have insufficient information. And you want to go and put about, let's say, 5,000 pounds into something that you don't know? Something that you have not done due diligence? You are not sure, but somebody is doing it and you want to rush into it? Oh, I want to start a business. Beloved, starting is cheap, but getting it sustained and successful is what we're talking about. So it's very important that you understand it. So insufficient information you must sit down sometimes you read books sometimes get information from others 
Ask questions. Seek knowledge. Ask people who have been there. Don't look at somebody doing something and you sit down there, you put one and two together and you think that you can go and start it. No insufficient knowledge. Sometimes some marriages collapse because we have insufficient information about the person that you are marrying to. Some people marry demons. Some people marry devils. Some people marry a lot of things and eventually they open their eyes one day and they say, wow, who am I living with? Most at times and sometimes the information is not enough. It's a mistake. It won't take you to hell. You've made a mistake. Oh, oh, that this person is my friend. Oh, you know, I know him. How did you get to know this guy? Because the guy is a barber. You meet at a barbering shop. You meet at a hair saloon. And this person is your friend. You don't know the person. And because you don't have enough information about the person, you send something to the person. And beloved, for all you know, that has been your downfall. That has been the greatest demon that you've met in your life. You don't know. So these are mistakes. It won't take you to hell, but it will be a blockade on your blessings. It will be a blockade on your destiny. What you want to achieve, it will take you a long time. So these are very powerful. So it is important. So I've explained, realized, and I've explained mistakes. So let me put the two together. What does that mean? Realizing your mistakes. Realizing your mistake is understanding clearly or becoming fully aware of error of judgment, incorrect and wrong decisions or opinions caused by poor reasoning, carelessness, and insufficient knowledge. So realizing your mistake is understanding clearly or becoming fully aware of error of judgment. So now I understand this is what caused this divorce in the first place. I am fully aware now that it's not the devil. It's not any witch in my father's house or in my mother's house. It's not any authors. It's not any ancestral or parental whatever. But I've come to realize that I was rude. I was arrogant. I didn't take responsibilities. I took the guy for granted. And this is what is causing or has caused me. You become fully aware of it. <laughs> No excuses, no blame game. You become fully aware. You understand what has happened. You are now aware of it. You, you, you understand clearly the judgment that you've made, that I've made an error. I've made a mistake. Incorrect and wrong decision that I have done. Beloved, you understand? All right. So now let me read a scripture to you and it will blow your mind. And this scripture that I'm about to read, I'm just believing God. That instead of me to do it twice in a week, for this very particular subject, realizing your mistakes, I'm thinking that I'll be doing it every day till I finish. Because it can take me on this scripture, it might take me about two weeks to digest this. Yes. And two weeks, today is on its own. Today is on its own. You understand? All right. Luke chapter 15. Somebody should put it there for me, please. With all respect. Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 1, 5, and I'll read from verse 11. Please share the program around. Uh, share. <laughs> share it to be a blessing. Put it on all the platforms. Share the program. Luke chapter 15, and I read from verse 11. Somebody should put it there for me. Luke chapter 15, from verse 11. Luke 15, 11, I read. Jesus continued. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So the father divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. <laughs> squandered his wealth in wild living. Somebody should type wild living or prodigal living. Wild or prodigal. Wild living or prodigal living. All right. Verse 14 says that. 
After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Apostle Akwesi in team, I see you, man of God. God bless you, my brother. My brother, Pastor Matthew, or say, God bless you, I see you. All right. So this guy now is broke and he was longing to eat the pig's food, but nobody gave him anything. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, let me continue. Verse 16. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to his father, I have sinned against, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called a son. Verse 22. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring me the best rope and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and a sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let, let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. So they began to celebrate. All right. Verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, What was going on? Your brother has come, he replied. Your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back sound and safe. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. <laughs> Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who have squandered your property with prostitutes come home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me. You have never left. You've always with me. And everything I have is yours. But you, but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours, <laughs> I love him, was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Beloved, we are about to look into this and I believe it will bless you. It will bless you. The power of destructive or the destructive power or weapon of mistakes. Realizing your mistake. Beloved, what I'm about to talk to you about is about a family. A man and his two sons. The older son and the younger son. And let me summarize the story. And so that I will come with deeper explanation. The younger son once, one day said to his father, Father, Give me my share of your inheritance, the share of your estate. I want you to give me my share. The father gave him his share. And the Bible said that he gathered everything he had. And he set off for a distant country. And there he squandered the money through prodigal or wasteful or wild living. And very soon he became broke. He lost everything. All the properties were gone. All the money was gone. He's now broke. So he decided to find a job. He got a job 
by feeding pigs. Feeding pigs. And sometimes he gets so angry that he wanted some food to eat. But the people who hired him will not even give him some of the pig's food to eat. Very amazing. It shows you how desperate that he was. This guy sat down and says, that, no, 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 no. I can't continue life like this anymore. I'll go back to my father. And I'll tell him, father, I have sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. Forgive me of my sins. But when he set off, his father recognized him from a distance. And his father ran to him and hugged him, kissed him, put a ring on his finger, and in fact, um, put a new robe on him, um, feet, um, sandals on his feet, and they killed the fattest calf, and there was dancing, and they celebrated his coming. The older brother, who has been with the father all these years, and has not left, and has not taken anything. And the Bible says that when he came from far and he realized what was going on. He asked and they explained what was happening to him. He got angry and decided not to go home. So his father came out and asked him, oh, come in. He says, father, I'm not coming. This son of yours, did you hear the statement? This son of yours, he's not my brother anymore. Hey, <laughs> So they told me, this son of yours went out, took everything, his share, and squandered the money through wild living with prostitutes. And he's come back home and you have accepted him. And you've killed the fattest calf. Me, I've been slaving, working hard for you. I am the good one. You've never given me a young goat. Eh? <laughs> and what happened? So the father says, oh no, everything that I have is yours. This brother of yours, look at the father's statement. This brother of yours, the father didn't say this son of mine. The brother says that this brother, the father says that this brother of yours was dead and is alive. He was lost, but we found him. So if you have to put treasure and prize on him, he's priceless. But he's come back sound and safe sound and safe. And the brother says that. And now they went together and they rejoiced together. Beloved, that's what we want to talk about. Now, this is the first bullet point that we want to go in straight. I don't want to waste time at all. Today I'll finish early. And if I am, if I feel good within me, I'll open the phone line. Then um, we will come in. And if you have any questions, any contribution, we can learn through that. So we can learn through that. All right, so now, beloved, the son, the younger son, went to his father and he says, Father, divide your inheritance and give me my share. Beloved, we're talking about mistakes. Divide your inheritance and give me my share. Beloved, in the Jewish custom, in the book of Deuteronomy, for that demand to happen, the man must die. And when the man dies, what happens is that the inheritance, his property, is divided into three. The older brother has two thirds and the younger one has one third. The younger one will have one third of it and the older brother will have two thirds. So, the younger son asked the question whilst the father was alive. It was a blasphemy and abomination. Because you cannot demand it whilst your father is alive. According to the law, he must die before the inheritance or the estate is divided. So, that is the first mistake. So I won't talk much about that. So, the father also divided it and says, take it. So, the guy got it and leave. And he left home. That is the first mistake that he did, leaving. So, now let's look into it and ask a very simple question. We all know that the guy left with free fear or caught. When you hope you, the question is, why did he left? Why did he leave? We want to know why he left. Why did he leave? I want to know why he left. Why did he leave? Such an amazing house. We could look into scripture that the man has employees. He has workers, which means he has businesses going on for him. We could tell from the story that the man was a wealthy man. 
a fruitful man. Let's say a millionaire or billionaire of our time. He owns companies. He's loaded. He has money. So I believe that they are living in a very big mansion. If today is our time, probably they are living in a 20 million mansion. Powerful. They have their swimming pool. They have everything working. They are driving the latest Jaguar, the, the Bentleys, the Rolls Royce. You know, things were going on good for them as a family. But one day, the younger son, the younger son got up and says that, Father, divide your inheritance and let me go. Beloved, on this, we want to look at some of the possible reasons why he left. And we will look into scripture and what we've just read and to tell you the exact why he left. Why? Living in such a house, you are wondering, is your father that horrible? Is your mom not good? Why are you living? And that is what happened. So why did he leave? We all know that a time will come that yourself and myself, we will leave our father's house. Let me bring that one in so that you will understand. We will leave our father's house. Oh, you've left. I've left. I am a man of my own now. You are a man and a woman of your own now. But what makes this one dangerous when he left? Why? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, that for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united or cleaved to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So a man must leave. So pastor, why is this leaving a problem? If a man must leave and God says that it comes to a time the man must leave, why is this leaving a problem and a mistake? Beloved, let me show you this. The Bible says that a man must leave. He didn't say that a boy must leave. He was a boy, not a man. Oh, I, I want you to write that. This, this is the first revelation. The guy did not leave as a man. He left as a boy. Can I say that again? The guy left as a boy. A man is supposed to leave. It's a man who is supposed to leave, not a boy. Hey, a lot of us, we are in trouble, we are in problem, we are in difficulties because we've left powerful things as boys, not men. We are dying because we've left too early and I'll come to that. He left as a boy, not a man. God's instructions in God's manual, he says that a man must leave, not a boy. A man must leave, not a boy. And who is a man? A man is not someone who is 50 years. No. A man is someone who is grown, who is matured. A man is someone who understands responsibilities. Can I say it again? A man is someone who understands responsibilities, who is matured, who is trustworthy. You can trust him. A man is someone who is faithful, who is mentally developed. Mentally developed developed when you give a man five hundred dollars he knows what to do with the five hundred dollars so a man is mentally matured mentally developed a man is prepared not overnight a man is prepared over time it's a process you don't wake up to become a man is go through the process, but this boy refused to go through the process. So some of us, we are struggling. Some of us, we are going through pains. Some of us, we are dying. Some of us, we are not excelling in life, all because we left too early as boys. We love to share this program. If not, <laughs> people must watch this and be a blessing because I'm going deep in this. You didn't realize it. You didn't know where I was going with this and you will never know until I finish. It's a very deep one. The guy left as a boy. <laughs> he left as a boy. He wasn't matured. He wasn't developed mentally. We could see from his actions that he was a boy. Hey, there are some people, they have grace, but they are boys. Today, I will annoy some of you. Today, I will make some of you hate me with the things that I will say. That is why the book of Job says that it's not those that have grace that are wise. It's not grace. It's what is in here. The guy's age must be 20 years. And he could leave. 
and powerfully naked because he has matured mentally. But this very one, with his actions, we could tell the mistakes upon mistakes upon mistakes that he did. And that makes him a boy. You are watching me now sometimes. You are a woman, you are frustrated. Why are you frustrated? Because you want to marry. I want to marry. I want to do this. I want to marry. And you married. And who did you know? You marry a boy. Ah, Renee, boys are bread. You were not able to look into it and you married a boy. It won't take you to hell. Can I say this? Hey, me say them. Remember, boy for me. Okay, let me calm down. It won't take you to hell. You've realized that you've married a boy and there is a work that comes with it. You are thinking deeper. Your, your intellect, your mind, your mental faculties is on a higher level and he's not able to compete with you as a woman. Though he's the man, he's the head. But mentally, beloved, he's not there. And the two of you don't match and you end up arguing and all that. Sometimes you marry a woman, you think that she's of age, but mentally, she is not there. So she cannot understand you. Everything results in a fight. Beloved, why? Because you married too quick. Boys. He was a boy. And we could tell from the story. So now, let's come back. Why did he leave? I want to know why he left. Why did he leave? Remember, leaving is not a problem. But he left as a boy. He left as a boy. Don't. Let me, let, me, let me take, as a woman, please don't marry boys. Hey, it comes with problem. A lot of problem. Because at the moment you get married to him, he becomes the head, the responsible one, the a servant leader leading you. And the question is, you are a woman, a grown-up mentally woman, and you've married to a boy. How can a boy lead you? How? How can he lead? How can he guide? So they were struggling. Anything he comes and says, what do you think? You tell him something and you want him to give you his opinion. Then he asks you, what do you think? What do you also think? Because he has nothing to contribute. I didn't come to that today. So this is just coming by the way. You must not have any relationship with an immature person. All right, I'll come to that. So. Why did he leave? Because as far as the scripture was concerned, this is a parable and Jesus was telling us something. So we must learn from the parable. <laughs> Pastor, he did say that a boy leading a family. Hey, it will be chaos. Woman of God. I know, man of God, sorry, man of God. It will be chaos. Now, let me come back. Why did he leave? Number one. The first mistake that he did is that he left. That is it. Big time. Hmm. What must you run back to? What must you go back to? Hey! Oh, wait, wait, you so come in, Sabi Nom. Minya, Junior San Wakasa. Wakasan ten temdodo. Wurashin ten temdodo. Your emotions were all over the place. Me, wait, hey! Were you so cramming Cassano? What that way? Where were you so cram? Me, Sabi no minia is come the cum. Yes, in soon it would be pound. In soon it would be pound. Yes, who smile as also for crying a general name. Or see a quire when the people receive us, <laughs> when the people, not God, when the people receive you, which means they take care of you. They will buy you suit. They will buy you shirt. They will support you, your vision, your mission. And he says, leave your blessings with them. Leave your blessings with them when they receive you. So it's people who will receive you. So don't tell me I don't want to have anything to do with anybody. Are you with me? My brother, Apostle and AJ, I saluted you, but I've seen you on, on board. Welcome, my brother. I hope Kenya was fire. <laughs> God bless you, bro. Oh, come on, my network. All right. So, beloved, watch, watch, watch this very carefully. So, people have what it takes. No man is an island. 
So it's key. No man is an island. So don't tell me you don't need anybody. Hey! Everybody needs somebody. You need me, I need you. Oh yes, you need me, I need you. Beloved, you understand? You understand? All right. Yes, Apostle has just put it there. For this reason, a man... A <laughs> Apostle have just put it there for me. For this reason, as I said, a man, not a boy. Apostle has just put it there for me. You understand? All right, so let me move on with it. You understand? So he left as a boy. He left as a boy. So why did he leave? Number one, untimely leaving. Hey! Untimely leaving. He left immaturely, number one. So he left immaturely. He left prematurely prematured he left immaturely number two he left prematurely when the guy was leaving he was green and he was raw he was green as they put it and he was raw raw material he is not refined hey you are not refined and you want to do business, you are not refined in the area in which you are going into and you want to start something, you are raw, you are green. And you said, somebody is going to marry. So you look at the woman's back, Coca-Cola shape, and you want to get married. You are green and you are raw. You, have, you don't have anything. Untimely leaving. Untimely. It was the wrong time because he was immature. Beloved, he was immature. Let me look for a scripture to read to you and it will shock you. Something has just come into my mind and let me see if I can find it. He was immature. If I find it, it will be amazing. If I find it, it will be amazing. He didn't. He didn't. Oh, my network, I can't really. It keeps going off. Oh, today. Uh, whether you like it or not, I'll preach this message. <laughs> the network is really worrying me. I don't know why. All right, let me move on with it. I think it's back on. So it was untimely leaving. The prodigal son did not wait to be matured and fully equipped before he left. Immaturity, immaturity will destroy us sometimes. He left half-baked. He wasn't complete. Anything that is half-baked, anything that is not complete will not excel. Anything that is not done properly, you will not get bias. So the thing has to be complete. So it's very important that you are matured in what you do. Don't rush into doing things. Don't rush leaving. He rushed leaving home. Why? Why? He rushed living. Probably he didn't do any assessment. He thought that, oh no, quick, quick thinking. One day, you know what? I, I can be a man of my own. Let me go and get this. So when I get this, I'm able to do A, B, C, D. He didn't think deeper, shallow thinking, immature. The Bible says that those who go deep into the sea, they see the wonders of God. Not those at the banks of the river. No, 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 no. You are just at the brink, at the banks of the sea. You won't see. Bible say, they goes into the deep. Those are the people that see mighty and great stuff. Yet, so if deep things and wonderful things and great works are in the deep, why do you think that you can just stand here and be ordinary and become powerful? That's what Jesus said to the disciples. Launch into the deep. And when they launched into the deep, that is where they had net breaking sinking boat miracle. If you want a net breaking sinking boat miracle, which is so deeper than when they caught the fish, the Bible says that the net began to break and the boat begins to fish, uh, sorry, to sink. And waters were coming, the, the, the waters was coming into the boat. So the net breaking, both singing miracle, it comes in when you launch into the deep. The guy wasn't deep when he left. The guy was immature. Was immature. So that is the first mistake. 
We do things prematurely. Immaturely, we do things. And that is why sometimes we are not able to get to where we are going. We do things like babies. We do things like children. We react easily. Hey! That is immature. You don't have to do that. That act will cost you everything. So, you wanted to get married, and they said, this lady, hey, umuna, nani ko kwa pai, she, umuna, sister, brother, unti mi tina hu. So, you see, it's a mistake that you did. And that mistake is costing you something powerful. Some of us, we've made mistakes in life. And, and, the, the, the amazing part of it is that we are not learning from the mistakes and we keep repeating it and we keep defending it. <laughs> we keep repeating it and we keep defending it. It's like our title. It's like our title. I have to defend this zone. This zone is mine, but the zone is killing you. The zone is destroying you. The zone is giving you headaches and you are defending it. You're not accepting it. You're not realizing it. You're not seeing it. Beloved, it will destroy you. I've made mistakes. Uh, me, I'm not ashamed saying it. I've made mistakes in life. We've all made mistakes in life. And I've told you that mistakes are different from sin. Sometimes when we talk about mistakes, people say, oh, he's committed a sin. It's not a sin. It's a mistake. It's wrong judgment. It's incorrect decision. The opinion, the judgment. It wasn't that great. That is a mistake. That is not a sin. It won't cost you heaven. You will lose heaven, but you will lose a lot, a lot of things on this earth. Hey, you made mistakes and you'll be blaming the witch in your family thinking that oh, the witch is responsible and you will get all these fake prophets who will come your way and they will tell you, sister, ah, I, I am about to hear one prophecy from any prophet from any prophet, those renowned prophet one, prophet two, major prophet, all the angels, I am ready to hear that they will prophesy to somebody and they will say that, oh brother, do you know what? The reason why you are not excelling is that you've made mistakes in life. Rectify your mistakes. Realize your mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. Do A, B, C, D. Always what I hear is that there is a witch, there is this demon, there is ancestral cases, there is this generational cases, and that is what is killing us. We are not able to empower people, letting them know, taking responsibilities for themselves. Realizing your mistake. The boy left too early. Immaturity will destroy us. Immaturity is killing us. It doesn't matter. You can pray in tongues. You can be a powerful preacher. You can be a wonderful man of God, but you are still immature. When we look into your life, we see that, ah, man of God, you are immature. Oh, yes. You can be filled, speaking in tongues. You can command fire to come down and you are still immature. Because the way you think and the way you do things is not correct. So the guy left leaving his father's house. Hey, why? Because ah, I'm coming to that. So the first mistake is that he left untimely leaving. It was premature and was immature. Hmm. That is number one. Oh, people, just type it for me. Um, um, untimely leaving, that is number one. The reason why he left. The reason why he left, number one. Untimely living. And beloved, you see, that is the danger in life. And that is the danger in life. It is a, you see, mistakes are destructive power and it's a destructive weapon. And it will destroy you. That is why you, you have to be aware of them. All right. Untimely living. Number two, hasty decisions. Hasty decision. Why? Why the rush? You are living in a mansion. You have servants around you. You have people that they are working for you. You are a king in your father's palace. So why the rush? Why the rush? So number two, number two, hasty decision. When I bring back again into relationships, ah, man of God, I'm just, I'm over 30. I'm over 30. So, I'm over 30. I was saying to me, what in Tamu? Hasty decision. You have been advised of what you are going to buy. You still didn't hear. 
hasty decision. Hmm. So, number two, hasty decision. The prodigal son or the younger son stepped out of his father's house ahead of time. He steps out ahead of time. The Bible says that when the clouds are full, they empty themselves. It's time. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son to die for us. God deals with time. Time. Hasty decisions. His request was untimely. He left too early. No proper planning or no planning at all. No vision and no purpose. Because we could look into what he did with the money that the guy had no purpose. The guy had no purpose in life. Let me say it deeply. Has no purpose. He has no purpose in life. He didn't plan with what he had. Beloved, you are praying to God. If God, we should grant you, let's say today, we should grant you, let's say, 100,000 pounds. What will you be doing with it? What will come into your mind? No planning. There are some people, they don't plan their lives. If I'm to ask you that, People say that, oh, in Africa, we don't even have vision 2020. And 2020 is just two years ahead. Two years per year vision. So, this guy got the money, got his property. He left. That is untimely living. Number two, hasty decision. Why the rush? Hasty decision. And that is what is killing us. And when you decide hastily, now no planning. No planning. I am doing this. What is the plan? You cannot sit and build a house without counting the cost. And to count the cost needs proper planning. No planning. A lot of us, we live, we breathe, we go to work, we come back home. We have no plan for our lives. What I want to do with my life. No planning. Number two, he had no vision. A man who had no vision. I'm not talking about sight. You see, the man has no vision. He doesn't know where he is going in life. That is a that is a second mistake. Hasty decision. And in that decision that he made. So you ask the prodigal son, where are you going? I'm going to a distant country. Where are you going? I'm going to a distant country. What are you going to do? I don't know. Why? Didn't you plan for it? If you requested if you go to your father and say, Father, give me my inheritance, it means you have a plan. But he requested for the inheritance. He had no plan. Of course, when he got the money, do you know his plan? He went, wow, on a wild living, prodigal living. Now, I haven't come to that. Prodigal living, wasteful living. And by the time that you realize, time just flashed. Hazam, hoo-ha, and you open your eyes one day and you are 40 years. You open your eyes one day, you are 50 years. You've done nothing, you've achieved nothing, and now you are angry with people who are making their life count. You are angry with people whom you think that you deserve to be here, and they are here, and now it has been that every round, and you become jealous, you become angry, you become greedy, you wish them down, you wish that their life destroyed, all because... You had no vision. The guy, the prodigal son, wake up one day. He was bankrupt. Wakes up one day, bankrupt. Everything gone. No planning. No vision. No purpose. People, you are watching me right now. This is what you need to do. After praying, you must sit down. Don't rush into doing anything. No hasty decision. People say that time waits for no man. It's true, time doesn't wait for you. But it's better you set proper decision. And the decision that you take will be a blessing unto you. You must take your time on it. It's better that way than you rushing into it, thinking that I am getting old, thinking that, oh, you know what? I let me get into this. I need this now. I need it now. The now, now people. Yes. He wasn't ready, number one. Number two, he wasn't fully trained and he still left. He wasn't fully trained. He wasn't prepared for the course that he took. He did not prepare for the journey. No preparation. No preparation for the journey. <laughs> 
No preparation for the journey. No preparation for the journey. You want to go somewhere. I believe he sat down. He sat down and he analyzed. And he went to his father and he took it. But he didn't make any preparation. He just got up, took it, and he left. There are people like that. Beloved, before you do something, you must. But Jesus says that. Who wants to build a house and will not first sit down and analyze and count the cost? Because Jesus says that if you're not able to finish building that house, people will laugh at you. Hey, so when to me and sit down there and we are, Minuya and Crawford, and Crawford, Bessero. Don't blame them laughing at you. And Crawford, Bessero, you will need power or much you need power as you so. It you must sit down. And analyze it carefully. But the prodigal son, the younger son, the mistake number two that he did, realizing your mistake. So we must learn from him, analyze it, so that we will not repeat it. The book of Corinthians, first Corinthians says that this book has been written as an example for us, so that the mistakes that they did, we too will not commit the same. Very powerful. It's very important. Hey, beloved. And pen for say, who got to so be about you say, eh, see ya, see me the abia, no one sensual studio, no ashe. It's only a fool who ignore warning signs. I always say this, it's only a fool who ignores warning signs. Ah, and yes, ah, man of God, I have power. Met me aye, okay, ya chuguho, beware of dogs, beware of dogs, ya chuguho, do not trespass, or make them. Your information do not trespass. Was meko meko oh, do come on with me. Yahoo, or be banan come on in the good song or cot yashi. And when you go to genuine education, maybe cry a can. You ignore warning signs, beloved. That decision that the prodigal son took, that decision destroyed him. Decision, you know, and I say no. Sad decision, you know, take it, you know. Hey, decision, you know, take it at that time. You know. Hasty decision, you know, and I say, you know, and you feel for by four, and you know, and you know, if you know, or just can if you know, or just can if you by four, or my demand stop with scan, or my demand, yeah, hey, but or this kind of coin, or no one, I'm jing out of fire, you know, and I say, you know, that is why I said. Our caption said that the destructive power of mistakes. Hey, we being country wrong. I join our fan one out for you. So I join and the sell. It will destroy you. It will destroy you. His decisions destroyed him. It wasn't any witch. It wasn't any power of darkness. It wasn't any spell that anybody cast on him. His own decision destroyed him. He destroyed himself. Beloved, look back, watch yourself, and ask the honest question. Why am I here? Who is stopping me? Who is pressing me down? And you see, if you begin to see these things, you change your prayer. Your prayer won't be die, die, die. Your prayer will be God, grant me the wisdom. Help me to make sound decisions. Open my understanding. Open my eyes. I want more knowledge. I want more wisdom. If you are going to fast, you are not going to fast because you want to destroy a demon. So be ya come to ya. Who may ya come to ya? Can't tell you. I say ready. Me bomb at time for to pay, pay, pay. Kum kum amu debi. Who ya come to ya? Say ready. Oh my wisdom. And ready. I'm filled with a spirit. And ready. I'm a power. And ready. I'm broadening your mind. That should be your prayer, because. What will destroy you is you, not anybody. So, the mistakes of the prodigal son, that cost him his inheritance. Beloved, what is costing you? A day na wo o ti wana wo analyze ya, e koste wo. E, e koste wo, e dre ni wo. E su kwa sori fi ya, no so fa afre wo. Min, minu ya, me hu se sun shu mo, ya bobo wun se mo tokro, 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 tokro. E tokro ni abobo ni weed ye wo mo. E tokro ni abobo ni cigarette pack. In tokro ni abon alcohol. In tokro ni abon party pa. Utu si ke gusi ayadi eno. In tokro ni abon bono. Saan ye manan. Uwa yere isu ucha bas pas. Uti as adanka. Nanka usika nanka vizye kwa hen. Saan tokro no. 
And then cause also for cartel say into clone brother a door so no do. It is bomadi any three tiers into clone. Now see can imagine that. What the akosi ufi for before self seed better water so obe brepa. These are the things that you need to know. Check your life. Check yourself. That is the decision that is destroying us. You understand? So if you are hearing the sound of my voice, people is going to be a blessing unto you. It's going to be a blessing unto you when you sit down and you decide well. Your decision decides your wealth. Your decision will decide the outcome of your life. Your decision will decide the outcome of your life. Whether you be broke or poor, whether you be healthy or you live in sickness, your decision plays a vital role on, in our life on this earth. So that is it. So I want to keep it brief and short. Again, number three, the third mistake. Beloved, share the program. The third mistake was a poor choice. Untimely living, number one. Number two, hasty decision. Number three, he had a poor choice. Ah! The beauty of life and what makes you a god in your own eyes is the power of choice. The power to choose. You can choose whatever that you want. Oh yes, you can choose to become anything and indeed you will or might become what you've chosen to be. You, are you with me? Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. There are some people, a poor choice. This, this, this younger son, he was very zealous, enthusiastic, but his zeal does not base on wisdom. He was very zealous. Obviously, me was zeal. Me was zeal. But the zeal, no, the head to head to know what they say. It that in any answer, so. Were well, very enthusiastic. Well, bet me, there are some people when they tell you they are going to see the queen, you must believe them. Hey, there are some people when they tell you, I am going to have a dinner with the queen, they can they can do that. Hey, but be a law. But those people they are not able to sustain any relationship. Sustain any they will find reasons to leave. Any they can't sustain any relationship. So they are me, I, and myself. Bad choice. Huh? Me, I, and myself. I am on my own. He is the only perfect person on earth. She is the only perfect person on earth. Apart from me, everyone else is something different. I am the one with the big brain. I am the one with the anointing. I am the one who hears the voice of God. People, don't lie to yourself. It's a poor choice because you're not the only person. Elijah stood one day and says that, hey God, I am the only prophet. And God says, shut up. Keep quiet. Don't say what you don't know. You have no idea. You are the only prophet. No, no, no. no. I have 400 of them. <laughs> you, you don't know. I know all things. I have 400 of them. Beloved, poor choice. They have zeal. They have enthusiastic. They want to do something, but it does not base on knowledge. Very deep. That's not based on knowledge. Poor choice. Choices have circumstances. Choices comes with consequences. Choices, it comes with consequences. It comes with consequences. Hey! They were choosing in there, no? Hey, it's now be chat. Choice, no? I will choose, no? It's a seed that you've sown. Tomorrow you reap it. What you do today will determine your tomorrow day. The outcome of your tomorrow depends on the seed that you sow today. The outcome of your tomorrow determines the seed that you sow today. So your today will define and it will determine your tomorrow. Be careful with the choice that you make right now. <laughs> Be careful with the choice that you make today. Hey, yes, Derek, choice come with consequences. Hey, you cannot pray the consequences out. You cannot fast the consequences out. I remember once upon a time, a woman called me and she says, man of God, I want you to pray for me for death cancellation. 
I am trusting God for debt cancellation. And I said, Mama, what happened? Then, beloved, this is a true story. Mama, what happened? Then she told me that I had the credit card. Three of them, about one is about 10,000. I, I, I was doing a good job. And I took loans and all that. How much in total? Then he said 50,000 loans plus credit cards. 50,000. I said, wow. Mama, what did you do with the money? Then she said to me, God said I should spend the money because I have been working hard. So I should spend the money. I said, God said you should spend the 50,000 pounds. Credit that doesn't belong to you. Loans is not the hard work of your sweat that you are spending, but these are borrowed money, credit cards. And number two, this is a loan. He says, yes, God said. And I said, okay, then do you know, tell God that you are frustrated and tell God to pay for you. You must say, Mama, we don't need to fast and pray over this. If God said you should spend it, go and tell God, God, make me pay it. I'm getting frustrated. I think she didn't like it. She was thinking that I was, I was about to kabe and kaba. I was about to command the windows of heaven. What frustrating moment. I don't have the time to command the windows of heaven with this foolish act, with this poor choice. And now, that choice, in the name, you see, some people claim that they've heard from God and they do silly and foolish and nasty things in the name of God. And before they realize they are in deep trouble, Yes, Regina, she spent it just like that. And when you look at her shoe, her suit, her dress, Abba, Sampa, Yawa Bruchri, Yawa Bruchri, Hey, Tadini Bidi Di Biachi. What does it? And Tadini Bidi Di Biachi. And that is what it is. She spent the money. I said, then tell God to pay for it. This is not prayer. This is not fasting. I will not come to quote scriptures and say that I decree and I declare may God cancel your debt. I don't have that time. If God said, if she was saying that, man of God, I made a mistake. Ah, that was a bad and a poor choices. I didn't know better then. God would have even had mercy. But she's bringing God into the equation saying that God instructed her to spend it and say, okay, then tell God to make you pay for it. She didn't come to church again. <laughs> hey. she didn't come to church again when I say she didn't come to church again beloved you see this is it take responsibility for yourself don't bring God involved I have done this if indeed God told you a simple case we shouldn't use any scripture to preach or to pray tell God he sees and he knows you are frustrated and God knows. And God told you to do something. Spend it. And you, as an obedient child of God, you spent it. And now what happened? You with me. Don't bring God in it. You've made a poor choice. A bad choice. The choice is bad. The choice is bad. And beloved, you see, when the choice is bad, this guy left his father's house. A house, a mansion. And he left for a distant country. And there the Bible says that he squandered his property, his money, with true prodigal or wild living. And now the money is gone. Beloved, what will happen? When you make a poor choice, it comes with regret. Have you regretted in your life before? Oh, yes. I have regretted so many times. Some of the things that I've done, I regret them. I regret. You must regret. Huh? Sometimes somebody will do something and you want to call fire. You regret at a certain point in your life. First lady Antoinette, first lady, God bless you for joining. So poor choices leads to regret. You regret what has happened. You regret that incident. You regret what is going on. Regression. You regret. And when you regret, Beloved, this is the question that you ask. I wish, I wish I didn't leave my father's house. I only wish I didn't leave. Regret. I wish I didn't leave. Huh. I wish I never said I do. Huh. To that man, to that woman, I wish I never said I do. I wish I didn't meet this guy. Regret that is what happened. 
comes with poor choice and God has nothing to do with it. The choices will not lead you to hell, but this choice, people of God, it will lead you to frustration, disappointment, heartbroken, failure. And that's what it will lead you to. So the first thing you will say when regret comes in is that I wish I didn't leave my father's house to him. Be like, what do you regret? What do you wish you didn't do? Number two, if only I knew this would happen, if only I knew, because I didn't do, that's why I did what I did. If only I, beloved, is past and is gone. That is the talk of regret. I wish if only I can rewind the clock. If only I can rewind the clock. Yes, Embry. Eh? Eh? Kofi Kenata, was a time no day. Eh? Sin committee man rewind the time man. And the comment chica crebi ya anka handa medibe si anka men twaso because I didn't know. Hey, Regina, yes, bad choice comes with a tag. Bad choice. I wish, and it comes to the next one. I could have, I should have, what I could do, what I shouldn't. Beloved, these are all regrets. These are all regrets, and if, oh yes, have I known? Have I known they say that is always at last? Have I known? Oh, I wish. I regret if only I know. Have I known? This happens. This happens through poor choices. Poor choices. Poor choices. Poor choices. Rene says that I don't know is, is the philosophy of the fool. Oh, Rene, sometimes we all do say it. Sometimes it does happen in our lives. Sometimes it does. So that is why, that is why you must sit down and think deep. Don't just do things anyhow. Don't let your emotions be on the place. No, no, no. There are, there are some people, tiny simple thing. Yeah, tiny simple thing. It comes with I, the could have, should have, and all that. The would have. Yes, I could have, I should have. I would have. And that is the problem. He left, and that's what it is. All right. Again, why did he leave? So, beloved, we have three points now on timely leaving. Number two, um, hasty decision. Number three, poor choices. Number four, he wanted to be independent. Hey, this kind of independent the guy wants. He wants freedom. Freedom without containment. Freedom without discipline. And freedom without guidance. Hey, free range. The Bible says that. In, the Bible says in the book of Judges, when there was no judge, everybody did as they saw fit. When there wasn't any judge to rule the Israelites, everybody did as they saw fit. I am a man of my own. Nobody decides for me. I do things. My beloved, be careful. And you can't have three, these three things without freedom. Containment. Huh? You must be contained. You must get people in your life who will tell you the bitter truth. And you must listen. The bitter truth. Let your emotions off the way. And hear them. Hear them. You want to be independent. Then you have to be an island. You don't have to say I have any friend. Because you're on your own. But freedom and independent. Without containment. Without discipline. And without guidance. You have to be guided. As Christians. You have to be guided by the word of God. Independent, the guy wants to leave. I am sick and tired of my father's house. I am sick of my father telling me do this and do that. You see, if you have a youth, please let them watch this. Some of the youth, they think they've been born in abroad, and abroad give them a price tag that they are 18, so they think that they are enough. Please let your children hear this. They think that at the age of 18, I have finished university. So they think that they are equal with you. You have not been to school. You have not been to university. So they think that they can operate this modern day gadgets. Modern day gadgets. 
they can go on Google. You will call them for them to come and do something for you to cast on the crown with him. Yansa chow. Oh, friend, I know about the chow because if we are seeing Yansa in Anno, I call eighteen, sixteen, or cast in the team. The war just a wood year. Won't me cut crumb up brofo or brofo in seven to me. Sister soon to a cast with the way Jimmy. Aha, it took crowd one person over to the cry. Hey, if you are a youngster, if you are a youth. Listen to me if you are a young adult, be careful. Independent and freedom is dangerous. It's dangerous. It's, it's dangerous. Be careful. Hey! Who to a flu papafi? Oh, my real man, you school. Oh, papa, catch us at your age. Don't bring any boyfriend into my house. Oh, boy, fool. Oh, co It is therefore you want to go and hire a room. Go and rent a room. Pay council tax. Pay bills. Then you will realize. That this world is true. But kubi wa unye unye. Afena eswe biya man. Ube regret it. Be careful. Because you don't want discipline. Because you don't want guidance. Parental control. Not even control. Parental guidance. You don't want it. What do you say? You don't want it. Of course, uh, uh, Auntie Regina. They say that a uh, uh, Guinean English. And your banner also a British idea. Now I know it's so come a come a. I me hey, bro for you, me chrome casa. A chroma for Ghana for your home, one more papa. Ghana for your home, one more papa. We become bro for the other serena. Why? Mentiasi, why? Beloved, do you understand? Hey, me, yeah, yeah, bresso. Hey, oh, we must be called we. Uh, Nintendo um, or all kinds of games and they can operate it. Beloved, yeah, yeah, breso. Near yet one to chile, eh, oh, be bo, yeah, yeah, win him, Zagronid, win him, yeah, yeah, pillow, win him, win Zagron, I want Tiasi. Pimpran, and I, yeah, the editing, you know, it is a wa breso, not gadget a bar. Men, you're watching some minim gadget in Timmy Jimmy. You youngsters think because what we used to do, that's not what you do, but the brain in my mind. Hey, what is in me? You have no clue. And your, your university degree cannot exchange for what is in my mind. Hey! What do you think? Now, okay, I say, oh, people that speak Queen's English, wouldn't people that have made it and they don't even know how to speak English? What do you think? And you sit and you disgrace your parents because they don't speak like you. Were they born like you? Were they born here? So you must respect experience in life is what matters it's not a certificate that you go to school and you can speak english and they gave you a certificate and you think that you have the whole world wisdom in your mind and because i told you that oh just come and do something on my hey 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 somebody has sent me a message you um uh john come and look at it ah, ah, man, with this simple thing you don't even know hey, be careful be careful they want to be independent of themselves so they rushed out and most of the times, what happened? They see them coming back in. They see them coming back in. They see them coming back in. They go out there frustrated. They go out there and it's like the whole world is crushed on them. Be careful. Huh. You have the opportunity to stay in your mother's house. Big opportunity for you. Make good use of it. Because of parental control, you are rushing out. Because these youngsters... This young adult, they don't want it. They, they you see, they, they want to be free from containment. You'll be contained. Once you live in this house, once you go out, you must come back at 10 p.m. You must be in the house. There has to be parental containment. You can't, you are not independent on your own. No, you live with me. So I pay the bills. I tell you what you should do. And because of that discomfort, because of that, they leave. And they think it's the best for them. They don't want discipline. They don't want guidance. They wanted to be their own boss. Free from parental restraint. Parental restraint. Guidance and principles. They don't want it. You understand? So, you see, when people are independent, they reject and object all the counsel of the elderly. All the counsel of the wise. When I talk about elderly, I'm not talking about someone who is grown and have grace. No, I'm talking about someone with wisdom. I'm not talking about age. I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about someone who speaks sense into you. 
someone who will look into the facts and will not judge you wrongly. That is an elderly person. There are some people when you tell them your business, you are dead. You are dead. There are some pastors, they preach you on their pulpit. Whatever they hear, they will not even come to you and ask you. You see, one of the things that I can't understand in my entire life, and I preach about it all the time to the people that work with me, you hear something about me. You discuss it with somebody else. You're not able to talk to me. It's not that you're even saying it. Constructive criticisms. You are condemning me to the act. Meanwhile, you know me. And you've never come to me. You've never come to me. And it's boiling inside of you. Why? You can imagine. Beloved, are you with me? This is what is destroying us. This is what is destroying us. So, it's very important that you heed to counsel. Probably he says that I, I am in my father's house. Every day father said, every day mother said, every day father said, every day mother said, well, I, I'm living, I'm, I've had enough of mother said and father said. Really? Okay. Somebody will give you another mother said and father said. And that will end you up in prison. That will end you up in something that you did not wake up for. Be careful. You understand? So, when we look into the younger son, the prodigal son, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about Luke chapter 11. The prodigal son. We're looking at, sorry, Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, that is our story. His last full desire was to get out from the restraints and the constraints of living within family home. Of living within the family home. That is family boundaries. He doesn't want the restraint and the constraint. His decision was betrayal to the family values and the community. You are an accident waiting to happen. Corrections is important in life. So when you meet people, they don't want to be corrected. They think that they are wisdom book by themselves. You have to be careful. I with what I'm trying to say. So you must understand that we need corrections. I need you and you need me. I may not be wise as you are, but in this journey, you may need me. You must pay heed and listen. That is very important. So independent without containment without discipline and without guidance beloved your life is an accident waiting to happen and we saw with this guy without containment he did he didn't have anyone to correct him he didn't have anyone to talk to him he didn't have anyone to help him and because he was on his own in his own world the money that he had he lost it he lost it all the asset was gone all the asset was gone. Some of us, we are in abroad. We have this. We have that. Everything is going on well for me. Nowadays, you don't want to listen to anybody. You don't. Uh, pastors are even fools to you nowadays. You you think that you you you've been to Britain. Hey, what to cry about Britain? No, no, no. You don't need anything else. Some even go to the stand and say there is not even God. Hey, I then what I be sure Google. Abbe, who will be theory? It will also act as if we say, ah, say, I'm not going to be a baby. And dada, yo, yate. And Penny for say, a pro, a better than a can can, a bon soap will be a better than a saint. Hmm. So independent. The next thing that I want to talk about, the mistake again that he did. So the first one, the first mistake, realizing your mistake. And again, what I, I'm saying is the destructive power or weapon of mistakes what mistakes will do to you number one we talk about the mistake of the prodigal son or the younger son was his untimely living number two hasty decision number three poor decision number four independent without containment without discipline and without guidance number five we're talking about irresponsibility somebody should type it for me irresponsibility irresponsibility this young man, this boy, this young adult rejects responsibility. <laughs> he didn't want to be responsible. Responsible for where? And there are a lot of us 
they don't want to be responsible. He wants the benefit, but not the obligations. Do you know why? Because, listen to this. He went to his father and says, Father, give me my share of the inheritance. Beloved, once he's living in his father's house, the things that he's enjoying, it comes with obligations. <laughs> it comes with obligations. So, he wanted the benefit. He wanted the properties, but not the obligations. He wanted it. I'll come back to it. For with the inheritance would come responsibility. Or being why, when you are given a gift, when something is handed over to you, it comes with responsibility. When a woman is handed over to you as a wife, it comes with responsibility. When something is handed over to you, you are responsible for it. And he didn't want to be responsible by staying. So he has to leave and be independent on his own so that he can mess about and blow time, high time. I'll come to that next time, at any time. With the inheritance that he received may have come with customs, it may have come with traditions, and it may, it may have come with honor. He didn't want any of them. Ah, on pet traditions. He just asked for the wealth the substance of the estate. He didn't care for any moral obligations that comes with the estate. He didn't want it. No, 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 no. So, they want this, but they don't want this. Hmm. Beloved, do you understand? They want to work. They want money. But when you take them to do the job, they don't want to do it. So, Obolase, lazying around. They want the money that comes with the job, but they don't want to do the job. Hmm. <laughs> eh? Beloved, you understand? You, they want a husband if you are a wife. I'm talking about responsibility now. So this guy was irresponsible. You want a husband, but you don't want to submit. You want a husband, but you don't want to submit. You want a wife and a family, but you don't want to be a responsible man. You want to be prosperous and fruitful, but you don't have to work skillfully. You don't want to work skillfully and intelligently. All you want is shortcuts. Shortcuts. So you want this. I want a husband, but it comes with a responsibility. You want a husband? Yes. Are you willing to submit to the authority of the man? That comes the question. You want a wife? Oh yes, the Coca-Cola ship. Are you willing to sacrifice your life for her? Are you willing, are you determined to be responsible? That is the question. You want to be fruitful. You are praying to be a millionaire. Are you a hard worker? Do you work at all? How much hours do you do in a day? Let us see it. You are lazing around and this is your prayer. You are praying that a rich man will die so that they can give you their inheritance. Beloved, it will never happen. You are praying for somebody to die so that the person will give you his inheritance. So, the prodigal son, he was an irresponsible man. Look at what he had and he blew everything. Look at me and watch me very careful. You want something. Are you going to commit to it? Are you going to be responsible to it? Are you going to accept responsibility to what you are looking for? As a pastor, are you going to be submitted to the people and the calling? Are you going to submit to the anointing that you have? Beloved, you see, you want a big crowd. You want people to cheer you on, but you don't know how to manage people. You want the giftings. You want to be celebrated, but you don't want the hard work. He wants the money. He doesn't want the obligations. He doesn't want to work at it. He is not willing to work. He is not willing to rise up to the challenge because it comes with responsibility. It's amazing. When God created man, he gave man a responsibility to look after the garden, to keep it, to till it, and to keep it. Beloved, what do you have that you're not responsible to? God has given you two children. You are not responsible to your own children. You're not responsible to your family. You're not responsible to your own family. Be responsible. The guy was running away from responsibilities. A lot of us, some of us, let me say this. 
We run away from homes because we don't want their responsibility. I'm not saying that everyone that has come out of a marital home, some of you, I will applaud that you came out and it's the best thing for you. But the question is, why do you want out? Why? That is the question. Why do you want out? Explain it to us. Is both party accepting responsibility? <laughs> Beloved, are you with me? So this is very key, irresponsible. And always we have people to blame. That is why I say that upon all this, the prodigal son is my favorite character. The guy stood and said, I have sinned. I have done wrong. And when you read the word sin, he said, I have made a mistake. I have made the mistake. No shame, no regret, nothing else. He is not ashamed of committing and accepting it. Some of us, we are very hard for you to say, I am sorry. Chiaka yike nube tu wade kemesi yu. He, ube kwa ko me mfa un hon. Hey, ube kwa ko e nyama sem, ube ko e beye wa sem. Uda ube sonu hon da ye be fa un hon, kakala be fa un yase. I'm telling you. So, the guy didn't want to accept responsibility. Hmm. Want to accept responsibility. Let me let me come with you for the last one because my time, all right, the last one. Because I said I'll do this video for two hours. The last one is the guy was impatient. 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 Didn't want responsibility. Or no one saw impatient. Didn't want responsibility. He has never been responsible for anything. Everything is somebody. So when you back Ghana for more, ye ye come she cry she you know. Ye aso for ye ye she unkomi. Ye come she ina ani ubi na yo. When you come she a chere sa una wey a umoda. Now so I can tell you say e the other way round. Wa abra bumu no. Wa na wey a umu sister, brother. Wa na wey a umu. You are the God of your life. You make the decisions and the outcome. Obey you are oyo. Eti on. O kasa se ya. Ni ebi ma kasi ntiso for o pa chere se. By phone you are na na o by phone ya boni ma on. There be by phone no. Oni ne tu nse di di. By phone no. O o fan ho beng. There be o. She say say ano man na mu mu ame ano man na me fan ho beng. Miti mi fi ahi no. Ano man oni me nete. Adentia matutu mi punum. Matutu mi windowsum. O wo bi ani dey mo ha. I didn't try. My check here make sure say me ma or what em ma demo ha. My tutu me punu my me checks. It is or what be me fear ha. Next is the to kobi da baby. Me and a man who to kobi da baby. Me be able punu me to ho. And or one I am one. What be say demo. Or one do we now beba. Me sume bomi ho bang. It is at the moment ni the ayam me masadi ye. She me bomi ho bang. No one in timi me kame. And a boy in timi me ugrami dem. It is simple as that. It is no. So one in your bar. A father be no a free me. So me, I don't care about witches. I don't care about principalities. I care about what you do. Bible says that he that dwells into who and also what tonight or trade and pull you know I say or trade and pull you know the ewo. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into the name and they are safe. So there is a name that will save you. There is a name that will deliver you. There is a name that will bring you freedom. You must run to the name. It's not the other way around. The name is not coming to you. You must see that you need it. Run to the name. And the name will save you. So, when somebody tells you, say, before being a area one, I mean, this is language, and I say, because one man before the permission, I want to mean, when you stand on your ground, and the Bible says, you resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. One can say, I'm going to 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 say, I'm going how I will be able to do That is my job. That is my responsibility. Say the Bible, who will be doing? No one will be able to do something. No one will be able to do something. Everyone will follow. Bible says, Jesus says that I have given you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. The Bible, who be able to do something? Say no. When you come down, I will tell you also. If you are telling me, say, before we near you, some commission, maintain it. 
and that is our uncomfortable from so called prophet. Soon soon, ya titi lo ni bonya makosa. Soon soon, obi duwa kuha. Soon soon, obi ayo say, and that is the problem of the black man. The man from Africa believes that somebody is pulling the strings of his or her life. Somebody sitting somewhere determine the course of your life. People, if you are hearing me today, you must stand on your grounds and say to yourself, enough is enough. I am me. I am my life. And I'll make it count. I'll not allow any demon to come and touch my life. Beloved, give me more likes on this one. This is a revelation. <laughs> Are you with me? I'm serious about this. So, instead of you taking responsibility, also for Sikana Shek, because I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do Masai adie me ena masai adie bunsem bia ni bae bia bunsem bia mechi chire wo obi o se adwaman ho ho mo so ena osofo ba ko o se brother adwaman ho ho mo so o so sofo o ba mi hunu de amenye o se okay no problem yenko o de ne ko ba bia e ma ye o madwuma yi ena o se enyina ho me ni ujina ha afei ye ba hwe ho ho mo kura me jina ha yi no e ma ni ne go hoyi Obe so wun sa no atwe wan do akɔ ma ni nche na hu hɔ mkro na be wɔ pint no aka se kɔbɔ adwuma wɔ hɔ ye nhwɛ na afɔ mu gina hɔ 30 minutes 1 hour o se boss hu hɔ no mai o se debut you know see anye that is all o dia se o se anye hu hu bia nyɔ e ye wo ankasa even if you are influencer, you are the one that gives the final verdict. Who who be in local raw pants? It is a jamai home home. The muniya sang kwasi ampai the muniya abo. Any jamai home home. Any spiritual marriage. Minya, ye beki kan sem fumu di atra osa. So peso wa jine tin sem fumwa. Wa jine beti sem fum. Na u ria sa choice na u wano. It has a consequences. O bi o minimum na mano oche oche no hu. Was there was a soon soon crowfoot in a tea? I didn't try because Yakikas has a match and a sign to no one more who who sent crowfoot in a tea or no who or has sunnati has relation power now. No who's in crowfoot in a tea. Beloved, you must take responsibility. I did it. In fact, ah, I saw hey, I saw him. Mom fan chemi. I have not been a good pastor for some time. Why the match or two? One ninety and pepper. And was ran over home. Um, that is the truth. You understand? You've not been. Oh, you see, people accepted. I have messed up. I did this, and it will be a blessing for you. So, let me come back to the next one. And the may be lying at you now. So, the next one that I say is impatient. He was impatient. He just wanted now. Then and then. Hey, the penis is here. Impatient people. Hey, what do you know? Home, 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 home. Impatient in our workplace. We are impatient in marriages. We are impatient trying to make it in life. He is impatient. He doesn't have patience for anything. Everything has to be now. Now, rushing, rushing. Not thinking thoroughly, thoroughly about it, rushing, impatient, it will kill you. Hey, impatient. Now, let me tell you this there was a man, I think, in the book of Ruth, Naomi, Naomi, and um, her husband Elimelech, and they have two sons, Marlon and Kilion. One day, I'll preach about a very fantastic sermon. Marlon and Kilion, and both of them, they were in Bethlehem, they eat Lehem, they eat Lehem, Bethlehem, and they said there is famine on at Bethlehem, they eat Lehem, a place of bread, that's the meaning of Bethlehem, a place of bread, a place of bread is shortage of bread, I, I wish I'm preaching this, the place of bread is shortage of bread, so let's go and get help, and they went to where, they went to Moab, Moab means seed of seduction. Hey, Moab means seed of seduction. And they went there. And their two sons, Marlon and Kilion, they married Ruth and Opa. The Bible says that Naomi 
husband Elimelech died. Within 10 years, Malon and Kilion also died. So Naomi had no family now. Husband dead, two sons dead. All she had now is Naomi, is so Ruth and Opa. So when she was at Moab, she heard, heard that the Lord has visited his people again and that there are plenty of food at Bethlehem. Bethlehem is now food in abundance. So she decided, what made me left? Hurry. Is because I would die in this place. So, now if there is food, let me go back. Beloved, he went out, sorry, she went out of Bethlehem in full and she went back empty. The prodigal son left his father's house in full, but he came back in tatters. He came back empty. He came back as a pauper. He came back as a beggar. Beloved, watch out what you leave. Watch out places that you come out of. Be careful. And Naomi came back empty. And when the people saw him and says, Naomi, pleasantness. She says, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, which means bitterness. The Lord has dealt with me bitterly. Beloved, let me tell you. Because Naomi said the Lord has dealt with me bitterly. Has nothing to do with the Lord. It has everything to do with herself and her decision. There are people who stayed at Bethlehem when there was anger there was only how to go through the valley of the shadow of death that person doesn't want to go through it Paul says that I know how to abase and how to abound there are people they don't want to go through anything so they want things then and then if it's not working for them they must do anything to get it impatient it's how you relate to people people followed Jesus is because of his relationship with them the way he handled them the way he embraced them, the way he hugs them, the way he shown them love, love, so they didn't want to go. The way he cared for them. After preaching, Peter says, Jesus despise, despise them, let them go. Jesus says, no, let us feed them. Let us feed them. The way he cared. Patient man. You are impatient. You everything, you don't have patience for anything. Do things timely. Assess it and be. Poor choices. Don't. Do proper evaluations. Do assessment. Do assessment. Sit down and analyze. And it will be a blessing unto you. May God bless you. May you hear this. And may it be a blessing unto you.